Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, hello, 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 hello. Hey, tonight I am back on here. Here we are here for the Erudition Network uh, Saturday night wrap up uh, where we go in and we cover the things that we've talked about over the last week. Um, we have three programs that are now going on on, on the network, so we try to uh, give time. And they're all interactive programs which allow people to uh, connect and talk to us. Um, and so what we try to do is to give you an opportunity to um, come on here on Saturday as we, if you are not a person who can catch any of those programs on Monday, Wednesday, or Thursday, um, but you wanted to have some kind of interaction, uh, it gives you the opportunity and the chance to come on and interact with us and talk about um, the things that we talked about over the week. Um, tonight I am going to be joined by, with my son, um, who him and his brother, they are, they run the, the Erudition Generation show and they had a very good topic this, this, this past week. So I'm going to bring him in, add him to the stream. Hey, Teddy, what's going on? Hello, everybody. Um, so I, the way we usually do this, I've only done this so far twice, um, that we've done the uh, the wrap up. It's pretty much what we want to be able to do is allow people to uh, catch back up with us. If we don't get too many people to come on for the wrap up, that's fine. Um, we don't have to do that. Um, we can. Um, sorry, adjust my chair we can just discuss a little bit of what we're going to do and then we can get off of here. It doesn't have to always be an hour for us to do this. So. All right. All right. So um, you all had a show um, this past, well, you know what, let's, let's go in order. Let's talk about um, your mother's show uh, earlier this week. She had um, a, a really great topic um, where she talked about uh, phenomenal women, and uh, she gave time because it's it's it being Women's History Month, um, it was a really good topic to go into because, again, it um, it allowed her to talk about how to live adroit, how to live a, an adroit um, life, right? So she equated a lot of the things that uh, about how how to live with, as you know, your mother loves fish. So she, so she did a lot of speaking with about the fish that she has and how to um, how to uh, equate that to your to to to, to your life. Was there anything? Um, that you, because I know you may have watched it, that you got from her show that you like to share? Yes, the woman's, a woman's story, well, testimony, as mom called it, is much different than a man's, where it often requires them to juggle a lot of stress between having children, schoolwork, or whatever pertains to her and still manage her family. So 
it's a lot that goes into women, as she talked about on that show. And she wanted people to understand that if this is what you're going through, she understands as she is a woman. And you don't have to go through it alone. That's why she has her show. How you can help manage that stress. How you can help cope with that stress. And to basically let you know that you are not alone. This is a normal thing that happens with women. And he, she also included for men to understand that help that to help manage that stress. Take up your role as a man and be supportive and also deal with the things that you're supposed to deal with so she doesn't also have to feel like she has to take a hold of that role as well because she women already have enough on their plate so I that's take from her okay, you were breaking up a little bit with your mic is your feed okay no, that's fine. You probably just had a little bit of a skip feed there, but it's okay. Uh, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed her show. I thought that it was it was a great uh, topic. I thought that, um, you know, it is important. We, that, You know, she does her show because she really wants to make sure that people understand that, you know, it, it's, it is a different thing out here, right? Yeah. Um, a lot of a lot of uh, men don't understand um, that, like you just said, the woman's experience is a lot different than a, than a man's experience. And so, I really um, enjoy that she gets on and she has uh, uh, those conversations and goes into that. So, I thought it was a really, really good show. Really, really good at, uh, point. Um, I wanted her to come on, but she has some other things. You know, she's working on her dissertation and stuff. So, um, yeah, same with Papa, which is why he couldn't be on. He's working into his bachelor's as well as I am. And I'm happy for both of them. Education is the key. Education is the way to go. So you all had an interesting show, too. You all went and you talked about um, I, I gave you all a book that I wanted you to read, um, you and your brother. And uh, you all talked a lot about um, that book, The Assassination of the Black Male Image, um, which is a, it's, it's a very um, eye-opening book. And I think it's a good book for young men. And uh, you all only got a chance, I think at that point, to only read about two chapters because I told you it's, it's, it's not a long book, but if you- Yeah, but it takes a minute. Yeah, if you really want to get the understanding of what is being said. Like even as of recently, I went back and reread two chapters just to make sure that I understood what he was trying to do. Because I know in my writing for school, I got to read, proofread, and then just before re submitting, reread it and figure out, does this convey what I wanted it to? Did I get the understanding of this that I need to? So I went back and read it, and I'm, I'm like, okay, yes, there's a lot of evil that's happened in, over the last couple of decades. Well, and, yeah. So I, I, I asked you all during the show, but I'll, I'll, I'll ask it again. Um, what do you think is the? I don't know. That's a different question than that. What do you think is the purpose of that book? What was the purpose behind it? To understand how you're portrayed, how people portray you in society so that you can work on changing that. Because they all, as already demonstrated in that book, they already have prejudice on you. And some of them don't even know why. Because it has been so ingrained into their mentality that they just become the accepting of this is what this is. Mm. And that book is really trying to encourage you change, be aware of this 
change that. Don't go down the road that we've been going down. And in our show, we talked about how, unfortunately, his message in that book was missed because we are portraying those same stereotypes in our music, in our movies, in our colloquial uh, vernacular. It's it gets really bad. And we need to be we need to change that. And not just not just saying that we need to actually encourage the youth of today to go and change that image. Don't live up to the standards because they already thought that years ago. And we use the example that if these people were to come out of the grave today, they would tell you, we told you. And now they corrupted you because even uh, white white people have taken on that persona of oh this is how they they act i like this song i do we have to change that because it's going to get us killed i agree uh i i I think that um one of the things that um i enjoy years ago that's an older book it's been out i think i think he's had several revisions but i think the first time i read that book it was probably early 2001 and um it was a uh it's a very well laid out book because again we're talking about how um people um not just whites but just in general how it attacks and it assassinates that assassination is a very very um accurate term because um assassination um yeah, it means discreetly yeah it's not something that you're doing um all the time openly right but it is a slaughter right it is an extermination it is a termination it is something that um you are doing to destroy people and so um there is a uh, a desire to assassinate the, the black male image and to um kill and murder us um covertly and then just as there is just as there is people who are trying to do it um in other ways right uh openly so i thought that uh that book really really covered um the the true nature of what is going on right and that was the thing to me you know, that that true nature, especially right now, you know, you look at this whole situation with the young man, um, Thanks, Mom. Rasheem Carter, right? And okay. Rasheem Carter, is, you know, being um, found in the woods. And you you see this um, and, and the police saying that nothing happened. Right. No wrongdoing happened. No wrongdoing happened. Um, and that's a good lead into what I talked about on Thursday, because on Thursday I spent a lot of time um, talking about how um, these things play out, right? And about the sundown towns and the people who attack us and um, going into the history of that. It, it is important that we cover that history because and I and I ask any of our viewers who may watch the wrap up after, um, you need to go back and you need to watch that. That's the first of one of of many rather, uh, because there was no way for me to cover um, all of that in one session. Just just it just would have been impossible. So what I tried to do was to do it in a way. Um, where I could cover at least the um evidence, the genesis of of what of what led to um sundown towns and and the things of the of, of, of that type of that type. Um for me um I la- I, I went I, I went and I pulled the um the map that interactive map that I showed on that show um, to me is powerful because 
again, what this is showing is that sundown towns still exist. They may not be um, on the books per se. People may not be sitting there telling you specifically um, that they exist, but they do. And even when you look at that map and you see around Denver, where we are, right, in, in, in Colorado, you see uh, possible areas of sundown towns, but you also see places that are surely sundown. Words, people are still being, um, there are very few African Americans or people of color in those places. And at the same time, they are being told uh, to not stay there. They're being discouraged to not live there. And so we're still dealing with all of that, right? We're still we're still dealing with all of that, um, even though, you know, we're well past uh, the inception of sundown towns, which probably really started to kick in uh, around the early 1900s, late 1890s, early 1900s. And look at where we are right now. You know, we're in 2023. And how it is also heavily in Illinois, where we know redlining still kind of is, even though we don't really talk about it as much. It is prominent there. You see it really, really badly in the Midwest. And a lot of that really had to do with people. Remember, when we talk about the great black migration and when a lot of blacks migrated to the Midwest, what they call the heartland of this country, uh, and wanted to be farmers and wanted to be people that worked in the factories and, and the jobs up there. That's all well and fine, but they really didn't want you uh, to live and stay there, uh, to live in certain areas. They wanted you as a workforce, but they didn't want you to stay there. And I'll get more into that next this next Thursday as we start to talk about the projects and the systems and other things that were put into place um, to further discourage. But, you know, I, I, um, I think it's so important, everything that we're doing um, on the network. I thought I thought it's it's important of you all to talk about the uh, take on this role of talking to your peers. Um, and I want to encourage you all that, you know, even if it seems sometimes that people aren't watching at the time of the live. The message has to be out here. It's the same with your mom. Right. Um the message gets out here, somebody hears it. And it, it it may be only for a few people to really understand and to get it. You know, people don't know that and many times after we all do these shows, you all will say, well, I don't know if I, if I hit everything I was supposed to hit or if I talked about everything I was supposed to talk about. And th 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 that that's gonna happen simply because of the fact that there is so much information to be covered. And when you are here, it's great when you have people who can get on and they interact, but that's not going to always happen. That's not going to always happen. Yeah, sometimes we don't get the luxury of people interacting, but we still want that message out there because if we, if we don't have that message put out there, the two or a few people that will get it and can bring this information to the light or even act upon it, you deny them of that chance because you didn't open their mind at the time. And that's a failure on our part. And we don't want that to be on our conscience. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a good job that mom does her show. We do ours. You're doing yours. And we try to hit this from three different perspectives. And then later, as we've done in the past, do forums with people so that you can have even more uh, minds together so that we can hit this topic all at once. Because yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a lot going on in the world and there's so much information to cover because so it's been hidden for so long. So, or not. 
talked about for so long. So we definitely want to make sure that it gets out to people. Well, to help people also to adapt, right? To adapt and understand. If you cannot adapt, um, you're going to run into a problem. And you have to be able to to talk to people, right? Let's just be real. You have to be able to talk to people. You know, I I I had went on onto Facebook earlier this week, a couple of days ago, and I your mother was making fun of it while on the Facebook, as she does, because that's what my wife does. But um, we were talking about the uh, situation that I had. You, I, I have a lot of us are we're all in school. Right. Yes. So that's the other part of this whole thing. We're in school. And so um, your mother was making fun of me because not not, you know, viciously. Yeah, just playfully. If that's what just, just well, poking or, fun or or like she like us to believe. But uh, she was making fun of me because I don't believe and I don't ascribe for any of us, all of us to ever, 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 ever um, allow people to dictate who we are. And I, 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 we, I, I can't just say I, we didn't raise you all that way. And so she was making fun of the fact that I had to, to say my first time, that I had a disagreement with an instructor, with a professor, a PhD. I don't care if you have a PhD. I don't care if you got multiple PhDs. If you try to um, put something on me, or to or to put me in a in a, in a box of your understanding, you're gonna hear from me. That's just who I am. Um, and so I had to uh, confront um, a PhD. Now, why am I saying this? Yeah, your mother made fun of it, and she said that I I may, I, I kind of aggressively. Uh, went after this man. I will say I, I I assertively went after him. That's the word I would use, not aggressive. I assertively went after a a college professor who uh, was under the delusion that just because a person is getting a certain degree that they can uh, hold you down aggressively and use serpentine logic to uh attack you right it's obnoxious and i'm sure people experience it on their jobs i'm sure you've experienced i know you have experienced it in school um and if you don't um go against the grain right if you don't uh study to show yourself approved then what's gonna happen is you're gonna people are going to be able to dictate to you and tell you who you are. And we don't want that. We don't want that. So um, never be afraid to, to speak your, your, your truth and to, to um, confront people. That's and that goes, goes, go ahead. Uh, that goes into what our great uncle Fred Shuttlesworth says as well confrontation is not bad. Goodness is supposed to confront evil. And realize how he didn't say conflict. He was very, Frank Shuttlesworth always chose his words very carefully. He said confront. It may not end in a conflict, but you at least need to confront it. And a fear of conflict usually scares people away from confronting people. And when we do that, and you back down, you allow problems to happen. For evil to prevail, good people just have to do nothing. And I don't know about you, but I'm tired of restraining myself and letting evil walk all over me. We need to speak up. Well, here's the thing. It's, it's, it's not just the fact of of evil walking over you, it's the fact that I think we have. Y y your mom talks about this. She talked about this again on her show just this past Monday. We get into the situation where we allow people to condition us, condition us 
to take abuse, condition us to take stratification, condition us to feel deficient, condition us to um, bow our heads and um, allow them to dominate. My issue with academic academia is that a lot of times you have people who, um, because of the level of what they have, rather, and it's not just academia. Let me not just say that. Academia does it a lot, but you see it even in society, even in celebrity. Just because you have money, just because you have position, just because you have something does not make you, give you the right to step on someone or hold somebody back, right? Or push them into a, a, an understanding that that's their stratum, that's their who they are. Who are you to dictate that? You are not God. And we have to stop conditioning ourselves to just accept it. You all kind of talked about it on your show with the assassination of the black male image. I talked about it on my show when you talk about um, uh, 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 sundown towns and being told what you can and cannot do. Your mother talked about it when she talks about being phenomenal and trying to be able to work and understand the differences between a man and a woman and what a woman has to go through. Don't hold me to your understanding when you can talk to me. So I think that all of those things connected. Good to see you, Pastor Sergeant. I'm glad that you're here with us. Sometimes it has to be done, especially when you have the facts. Yes. And people have to be able, you know, one thing about the professor, I saw this at four o'clock, three or four o'clock in the morning, because I went on to go check a grade, because I'm usually, sadly, up reading, right? And I saw that. And the reason why your mother made fun of me was because I woke her up, right? Because I was mad. I was like, wait a minute. Did this man just accuse me of plagiarism? Did this man just accuse me of literary theft? Did this man just tell me that I am, uh, that I don't have the understanding to, to, to technical understanding that God has given me? Yeah, because you didn't meet his understanding. And he, when, when you don't know something, whatever they don't know, they attack. It is so they went, oh, okay. Uh, he plagiarized because I don't know what in the world this his, is. His microaggressive. And then that's the thing we too, we got to understand these microaggressions. It wasn't that he came out and just said, hey, you know what? You're an idiot. What he said was, I looked at the beginning of your writing and it was too formal. In other words, that was his way of saying it was too educated. It was too erudite, right? It was it too can't advanced. Possibly be yours. It can't possibly be your thoughts, your experience, because how can you, sir, this black man, this, this guy that's trying to get this degree, how can you write a, on a level of a, of a subject matter expert and you're taking a class to get a degree? You're not an expert yet. And this comes down to this thing of mastery that I always talk to you all about. And even worse, if uh, his person, he had a personal hang up, which is, I have just now learned this. How did you at this level already come to that understanding? Because there's a lot of people like that, too. Well, I work with you all a lot, right? With your with your uh, vocabulary, with your your colloquialisms and how you use them, with your what I what we call coding, right? To be able to talk in different areas in different ways so that you can walk into a room with a scientist and you can sit down with people just regularly in your family or talk to somebody on the street. The ability to adjust your uh, conversation, your jargon, um, your cadence and all of that to a point where you can talk to people and you can reach them. The problem is that because someone holds you and says, well, you're from this area, you're from the South, or you're from Chicago, or you're whatever. And I don't understand how you could have this. I say this to you tonight again, because we are in a situation where, as we talk about this wrap up for the shows we've done this week, where people are trying to dictate to you who you are, where you can go, who you can be, 
We see it in the laws in Florida, in Texas. We see it with different communities. You know, we talk about the uh, transgender issues that are going on right now. There's so much stuff going on with guys and, and, and men and women who are transgender grooming and trying to use grooming in a way that is um that is that is that is evil there's no other way to put it but because everybody's so afraid to to talk about it because they feel like if i talk about it yeah you see i open the door for conflict and all these other people have been with the castle culture i don't want to get canceled i don't want the conflict i don't want this and they shy away from it. It's like, I won't say anything at all. But and there's... what you have come to do is that, unfortunately, you're not helping the community either. Because then what you do is you allow corruption to happen. And then they find their way in. They become the face because if you let the devil in, he's going to drive. And you then you let it. them control your movement, right? You're letting You're letting corruption and evil control your movement. And you're not speaking out against it. It's the same thing with the civil rights movement. During the time of of of, of you, your great uncle Fred Shuttlesworth, during the time of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., during the time of Medgar Evers, during the time of all of the of Malcolm X, these men, people told them what they could and could not say. Yep, and they tried to enforce it with invading them with agent provocateurs, and then you would also always see them somewhere in the mix doing something crazy. And then they become the face of the movement because you need to understand they already don't want it. So they're going to nitpick every little thing they can with a close fine tooth comb. And when they find what they're looking for, oh, no, this needs to stop their terrorists. (laughs) You remember during this lesson that I did on Thursday, I talked about I asked the audience a question. I said, do you know what a fusion ticket is? what a fusion ticket was, I should say. And I ask that because I know that it's not covered in schools. Yeah, but I it, had never heard of that but it's, a, but it's a part of our community. It's a part, that it's a, it's a tactic that is still used. What we refuse to confront, we silently agree with. Exactly. Exactly. We agree with it. We go along with it. We are to be the, the 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 method and the code of the day. Fusion tickets are important because we still see them. What it happens is that we are allowed to take certain positions. Like a black man could be a garbage man. A black man could um, be the manager of a store, but not the owner of a store. A black man could work at McDonald's, but he can't be the owner of McDonald's. You see it in business. You see it in politics when I say, well, I'll let you run for sheriff, but I'm not going to let you run for alderman. I'm not going to let you run for mayor. I'm not going to let you run for governor. And we talked about that in the Suntown Towns episode that you were in, because that's it's a means of pacification. Like you can you can be here. Great but we word. don't want you to commune with us. Great work. It's, it's a pacification method that you hear. Take this. Be quiet. Great word. And I and I I remember your comment during the show. That was a great point to make. Right. That was a great point to make. Your mother's on here saying, "Tell everyone how to get to the older episodes." Uh, we are, okay. We, so. Uh, we have understood the issue with YouTube. Uh, if you're having issues with Facebook, eh, that can be, all you gotta do is press the live on our Facebook page. YouTube is a bit wonky right now because they had just updated it again. What you need to do is that you go to their edition homepage, click the our image, you go over, and you should see a banner for videos, lives, community. Click lives and you will see all of our episodes. The other videos that you may see if you only click on videos are the standalone episodes, which we will have more of those in the future. We know that they have been requested. But yes, to see our everyday interactives and lives, 
make sure you go to the live ribbon and you will see all the content that we posted for the last two years. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let them see. I want to um, share my screen while we're on here since your mother makes a very good point. I'll share my window here. Like we're on right now, right? So you can go to our lives, but you could always go and, and look up. Can't spell. Somebody must have been watching. All right. So here we are. So when you when you pull up the Erudition Network, you're going to see our symbol. You click that. You go here. And what's, what Eddie was just saying is that you're going to see all of these things here. If you go uh, to our live and click our live, you will see all of the episodes that we have that we've done over the past uh, year or more. And you can click on those episodes and you will definitely see um, like even when we do our wrap ups, even everything. And you can always comment on our um, episodes. You can always comment and leave a comment and we will get back to you every time. Tyson, good to see you, brother. Hope everything's going good, man. It gets smaller than that. I never get pulled over in an older car, but 1% of the time a cop sees me in the BMW 750, I, I get pulled over. 100% of the time, you can drive that old car, but not that BMW. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Holding you to their standard Hold of what you. you can and can't have. Yeah, what you can and cannot have. It's not for you to have this. And isolating you. And then again, as Teddy did, uh, Sean Anthony was saying on their show, then assassinating you, right? A covert action to assassinate not only your image, but your 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 pride, your understanding, making you grip your um your, your your will tighter because you see them behind you and you know they're gonna stop you, right? Those things that affect us mentally, and then as my wife says often, that then um, affect you physically. Mental health is physical, is physical wealth, and so when you when you're affected with these negativities. It stays with you. Stays and then when with you, you are pulled over, you freak out, as we've seen, and they don't give understanding to that, and they just escalate the situation because they already pulled you over with the means of escalating, but now they really ain't trying to stop. Or even worse, they discourage you from riding your BMW 750 altogether because, no, I don't want the trouble that that comes with. So, so it's... Something so that I worked that something that I worked hard to have, and I don't want it. I don't want to use it because it's going to put too much of a, 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 a of a focus on me. You know, we we spoke um, heavily this past week. Um, well, I did, and I know I think you guys mentioned it a little bit on your show too. We spoke really heavily about this young brother um, that got. Uh, killed down in the down south, uh, Rasheem Carter, and one of the things that he had said to his mother was that he felt that he was being followed, uh, and that they had it out for him. And I, um, I remember on the show I showed the picture uh, that had been uh, taken out of a. Yeah, it is unfortunate, Pastor. Sorry, not completely. It's it's so sad that we, you know, have to be this. And then it's it's even more it's sad too because even our own people, even our own, even our own culture, black men are you know, and black women being assaulted and um pulled out of their car shot because they're driving a car that another black person, criminalized black person, thinks that they want. And it's important to see these photos because you need to understand. This is not something that happened years ago. This is a modern time. That's this is a picture taken with modern cameras, modern video. And that brother's not here anymore. But all you see is a skull because they decapitated him. And left his body in the woods. 
This is just in October. This is just in October of last year. And the reason it stands to me is that when my father, my, my dad died, we went down to go to uh, to the South. We went down to Arkansas. Um, we were down there in the South. We stopped in Oklahoma. Um, we did some things. We went some places to go. See. We still have to show some of that stuff, pictures that we took. But we went places down there. And it's so stratified. You still see these issues that are going on down there. People looking at you like, why are you in this area? People living in situations where you saw uh, whites had gone and bought up houses that blacks used to live in that had been confiscated or taken from them, right? And we were looking at these houses and going, wow, this was the black area of town and now it's predominantly white. And these people have this, they took this, they burned down other houses, destroyed some communities just so they could have it. This whole sundown town, um, this this whole idea of holding you, like Tyson just said, even to a small extent, even with your car, even with the clothes you got on, even to the way that you uh, just just being there. I just talked to uh, a Latino person, kid of mine. He's around my age, and he's in Chicago. He got caught up in some bad things. I'm sorry that that happened. And we met in Florida Pitt years ago. Uh, but he also formed a temper because his mom went and him went into a Walmart. Mm -hmm. And they went out the exit sign because the enter, they went out the entrance sign to exit the building. So you know the banner says enter exit. Well, the exit sign was filled up. They couldn't get, get through. So they go through the entrance sign, and an old man screams behind them, Mexicans can't read. And that set, that set him off. And if you know anything about uh, my friend, he, when he's set off, he's there. there there's no turning that off. Thankfully, his mother was able to calm him down, but there's a, there's a different level of disrespect from him, as he laid clearly to me, for you can disrespect me, and I may only talk to you, but then you would disrespect to him in front of his mom and his family, and all, ultimately his whole family, and that's what set him off. Again, that's that idea. You know, Tyson made a comment. Oklahoma was where we couldn't let our entire army unit off the base because of the community surrounding it. And people act like these things are over with. They still exist. Unfortunately. They're, they're, they're still, as Pastor Sergeant said, unfortunately. And it's why it's so important when we do these shows. And I try really hard with you boys because I, I know it can feel... Um, it can feel overwhelming. You can say to yourself, man, um, I don't know if anybody's paying attention to what I'm talking about, but it's important. And I don't want you to be discouraged. I want you, you all are college educated young men. Now you're going to school, you're trying to better yourselves, you're doing things um, to change the perspective of, of young black people. Me and your mother encouraged that. Now that has to be your decision. Can't necessarily be our decision. It has to be your decision and I'm proud of you all. But I also know that it can be very discouraging. It is the reason why I push you all so hard sometimes and I and your mother will tell you certain things because we want you to understand it. I wanted to pull up the interactive map again because we're talking about Oklahoma. And as you zoom into Oklahoma here, right, there's the areas that we were in, right? You see that thing up here where it says probable and surely? I remember mm -hmm. when we went to your uncle's uh, retirement from um, the Navy and we were coming from Memphis. And we drove, 
through this area. Now we were in Little Rock recently, but you start to see all of these areas where where basically black people are still being told they can't live or stay. Oh, they're not actively doing it, like because it, but they're they're enforcing it by policies and things of that nature. When you drive in and they say, "Well, what are you doing here?" Right, and around uh, Tulsa, where you can see there's still it says probable and then possible so and we we were there so we know that yeah it was because when you drive your uh car around and then they'd be like who's in that car well Have remember seen them before remember when we went to uh your uncle's retirement and we were driving back and i had to go take you all to the bathroom <laughs> and there were uh racial slurs on the wall in where go home uh stuff like that and we saw clan paraphernalia right um we saw uh little areas or i shouldn't say little areas property that was owned that had the the three triangles right yeah they love them trying man i don't know if that's because that 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 is an identifier of their hoods right and people riding past us looking in the car trying to see these these are realities. These are realities. I remember when I we went to go get uh Evie. We went to Wichita Falls, Kansas, right over in here. And your mother had uh ordered the dog, and we were gonna we, that's when we were on our way to your uncle's retirement. We went we went to Wichita first to go pick it up. And I got out of the car because the guy was gonna give it past the 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 dog to us. Um at a Cracker Barrel. And by the time we got there, it was nighttime. And there are two things that happened in Wichita that this area where they're saying is probable that I will never forget. One, when we were driving there at night, the guy stopped us. You remember that? Stopped at the police, pulled us over to the side and asked me why I was in a lane, whatever. And I was driving, doing standard to the law. And I gave him my military ID along with my driver's license. And then all of a sudden it was okay. But he stopped me in the middle of the night with you all, black man driving on this road and near Wichita Falls. And, and, and it was really nothing, no ticket. I wasn't speeding, none of that. That was one. When we got to the Cracker Barrel to go get Evie, go get the dog, the guy who was there to deliver the doll for his mother, who was a breeder, he had a Confederate flag up in his car playing country music. And he looked so shocked when he saw this black man and woman buying this dog. It, it is real. It is real. And unfortunately, it's costing people lives. It's costing folks their lives. We're, we're constantly running into the situation where black men and women are being killed. And then people say, oh, well, they committed suicide. Remember Sandra Bland? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They just hung themselves. Or he was in the woods, just hung himself. Like, okay. Uh, he somehow found a way to rope himself that high into a tree. Oh, no. He climbed up and jumped down. Okay. Pastor said it too. He said we were driving through some of those southern towns and we were stopped several times. Because why are you here? Why are you here? And right? you already had a target because you have out of out of state license plate. So they already looking like oh, you really shouldn't be here. And I agree with you, Pastor Sergeant. You gotta you have to give them something to let them feel like you deserve to be in this area or I have done something to validate my right so you can leave us alone. Because in the end of the day, as African-Americans, as black people, we want to get home safe. As people of color, we want to be able to get home safe. We want to be able to make sure our kids are okay. Tina said, he didn't hand me the dog. He let it run. And I saw he was torn as to how to hand him the money for, yeah, I, that is that is true, sweetie. I, I thank you for clarifying that. He did not hand the dog. Because he didn't want her to touch him. We have to know that that level of insanity still exists. Not saying it's everybody. 
but it's there. And when I look at this interactive map, and I'm so uh, happy of Professor Lauren, you know, Dr. Lauren, who is no longer with us, passed away during the pandemic, 2021. But he he spent years looking at this stuff and trying to understand how and why this was happening, right? And giving the history of it, wrote really great books about it. This interactive map is based on a lot of his work that is still being done by others. So it is something that we definitely have to understand. We have to understand as we navigate. And then, you know, this whole political excuse. We got about 10 minutes before we're going to check on out. Let's talk about that political excuse. Because in your, in the book that you're reading, the book that I, I asked you all to read, there is a lot that talks about how politics has been used. Some of the men in the book that you're reading about, I did in this master class. I talked about it in this master class. Mm -hmm. The men that deceived America, you see them often. And it talks about all of these men and how they wrote Walter F. Wilcox. Walter F. Wilcox is one of my all time. It blows my mind. And the reason why, Teddy, I'm sure you saw Walter Wilcox's name in that book. Mm -hmm, Hoffman. The the issue with men like this is that their their work, you see how this says 1925 to 2001 mm -hmm. on that slide? Their work is still being used and validated. Walter Wilcox lived almost to 100 years old. And you also got to understand what what that means for those of you that don't come from a college background or may come from a little bit of college background. You know, these people, if you study psychology or you have to look at a theory of any kind, those theories were posted way back when. You have Dr. G. Stanley Hall that's in this book, founder of the APA. Yes, he's went along right with these ideals of Walter F. Wilcox. Hall friend of, there he is right there. Friend, there he is. And in that picture you see right here, when you look at, at uh, Stanley Hall, he's in that book that you're reading. Who is Stanley Hall sitting there posing with? Who's sitting Freud? right to Sigmund Freud? Sigmund Freud. A man who said that uh, that black men, Stanley Hall, who believed that black men were erratic, right? A man who believed that we were volatile, prone to transcordial. In other words, we, we want to have sex and rape and we're going to do things. But all of the fathers of psychology, all of the fathers of psychology are sitting there together in that picture. And we had to study these people. I didn't know that he was a big time uh, Dunning School of Thought scholar until just recently it's it is a reason why i wanted you all to read and why i stress for everybody to read right even um armstead who wanted to argue he's in that book that you're reading too armstead actually wanted to argue that um black men and women are men and women he wanted to argue that not beasts of god he didn't want to give us that status but what he wanted to say was that we were yes, that we, we are aware of our thoughts and that we're just basically innately evil. We're evil. Did you and that I did come across some of that book. I was trying to remember when, and that's what he what he did. Not that he wanted you to be classified as human, but he wanted you to understand no, don't excuse their behavior. They're not like animals, they're not like beasts or dogs. They know what they're doing, and they're innately evil to justify exterminating you. Justify genocide. Because his in fact, argument... I, saw it, I see it in that quote right there. They justified the lynchings of yeah. you. Yeah. Because 
they wanted you to understand these people are evil and you need to get to them before they get to you. Because let's let's look at it as a religious basis. Charles Carroll wrote that they grow the beast of the image of God. Charles Carroll said that we were beasts of the field, that we, we are not made by God. We are animals and blacks are not a human, right? We're, we, we are dangerous. He, he, he went along with that. And Pastor Razor, uh, in one of his books, he counters uh, a lot of this. But the reality of it was, is that Charles Carroll believed that. And people started to buy into this idea of how the black man was a jigaboo, a spade, an animal, all of these things, right? Um, he's, he is not the son of Ham. He is not a man. And so people were buying into that. However, his, this is the dual attack, right? The double-edged sword. When you look at Armstead, Armstead disagreed with Carol. Just like you said, because Arson understood that there would be skeptical church goers, white church goers, who would not buy into the theological idea that that blacks are not human. And, and the reason why is because that would mean that they were sleeping with animals. So his idea was they're human, but they're evil. They're degenerate. They're not the people that you want to uh, interact with, right? So we have to understand those double-sided swords. We have to understand how these men are manipulating who we are, right? How these men's uh, books that we think, Walter Wilcox's statistics, right? Which are still used to talk about uh, the lack of black fathers or, or fathers and, 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 the, and the criminality of blacks. They still use his statistics. That somebody thought that this can stand the test of time and still be enacted upon, which is what you do in psychology anyway. Because when we in psychology is just that you are trying to link definitions to the human behavior. It's there. We know it's there. But how do we prove it? How do we what is the term for this? What can we do? So that's why it's still relevant today. Why you're still seeing them, and it, while it may uh, surprise some of you, but when you sit there and you actually take a psychology class or you have to study any theory, you know that these theories have come from long ago, like I said before. So if it's coming from that long before and they're just applying it to today and you live up to that standard of meeting that image in your movies, your rap, your jargon, if you live up to those standards, you just became another statistic in these men's false theory. And they, one thing that you must understand also, that these men got paid a lot of money for the time to do those studies. They were given money to conduct these theories. That's why they always seem to try and one-up each other. Well, no, you can't be this because there's money in it. And, and they sold these books. These books sold. They sold like, 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 because that was that was the medium of the day, right? That was the medium of the day. When you look at William B. Smith, right? William B. Smith, um, along with several others, Shufel was another, but he was one of the people in the early days of the nineteen early nineteen hundreds who wanted eugenics, who wanted to neuter right um, blacks. And he wrote a book called The Color Line, a brief on, on behalf of the unborn. In other words, he wanted to talk about the future. And we know that his books had an influence because we know that black women in the South, particularly, they were going in for minor procedures and they were giving women hysterectomies. They were neutering men in jail for, for, for minor offenses like vagrancy. They weren't killing you outright because they wanted you to work, but they wanted to make sure you could not have children. This is the reality that we have to face and why reading that book like you all are reading, Assassination of Black Male Image is so important. And I encourage you all to keep talking about it. Keep talking about it with the people in your generation. Keep talking about it um, so that they understand Right? right, that, that this, this is, is real. Great. This is still going on. And once we finish this book, we got some more that we can read because if it's that's just the first two chapters. 
kind of scared to know what's still going on in the other ones. But there's more books out here that go even deeper than that. Yeah, they believe what they were writing. They believed it to the death. They believed it, and they and they taught it. They inspired. We all look at Hitler, but they inspired many people. Population control, mass incarceration. Yes, slavery by another name. I'm friends with a German named Rico, and he basically said the reason that they did that is because the Americans already told told them it, it was excusable. They saw they were aware of what was happening over here, and they just went and they say, well, they went a step too far. No, they just reenacted what you did and just put it on the forefront. And I'm then a- he said he said that the Germans thought that y'all just want to go to war with them to show yourselves off. And they did the same thing. And honestly, can you blame them? Joseph Goebbels, who was the head of Hitler's propaganda, was the guy who wanted to take over after Hitler and actually killed himself with his wife uh, in a bunker um, after Hitler killed himself. Goebbels, when the American government, um, before we entered World War II, when the American government sent over its detest for what it was seeing the Germans do, this is before they knew that they were killing them in mass, the, the, the killing the Jews in mass, they told the, the Germans, they sent over uh, diplomatic uh, um, papers and things and told them, hey, this is unacceptable. You cannot do this. And you know what the Germans sent back to them? No. Goebbels wrote a letter and the only way he said the only name that he said in the letter to excuse it was Mississippi. That's what he said. Mississippi. The Germans knew what we were doing, what the Americans were doing to the African Americans. They understood that they were talking about eugenics and they were doing things, control parenthood and neutering. They knew all of that. But it also talks about how there's a German in here in this book. That they talk about how he was a found believer in this. He wasn't even American. So it wasn't uncommon that this was reaching other parts of the world. They just didn't care. It made money, gave them publicity until yeah. it backfired on them. And it went that horrible. And then, oh, well, you know what? We got weapons of war, too. Let's go to war with these people. Because they're doing too much. We didn't know that's at least how that's how Reiko saw it, the German. We know it differently because we teach history differently. But Reiko over in Germany feels like the Americans just came over here to flex their weapons and beat us because of what we were doing. That's not what it was. America never even entered World War II until the Japanese attacked us. Mm -hmm. And I had to tell him that. It wasn't until Pearl Harbor that how we dare, got involved. How dare these uncivilized Japanese attack us? And then because they were aligned with Germany, that is why we eventually then said we it was the excuse to go to war with Germany. Yeah, and I was about to get into that because I had But there's a lot of history there. That's not what that is. But it tell, it goes to show you how history is taught differently around the world. And we gotta gotta teach On a purpose. better picture. On purpose, because most people well have a as we get ready to get off of here, we'll go to about five minutes after hour. But one of, one of the things that I often teach you all, I try to tell you all, is what? What do I tell you guys all the time? I about history. Yeah, you can't have a parallax view. Can't have a parallax view, and a lot of the the history that is taught, people think it's boring. They don't want to hear it. Because we were conditioned to think, what? History is boring in class. And why was it boring? Because they're not talking about me. Mm-hmm. Abraham Lincoln don't look like me. George Washington don't or look has like me. No relevance. Thomas Jefferson don't look like me. It's so long ago. Why should I care? And it, yeah. Um, we're telling you why you should care. I'm not African, I'm American. But uh, yeah, I'm black, but the African don't like me. The African can't stand me, which is a lie. Marcus Garvey taught you that that was a lie. 
But if you don't read, well, what you don't read Marcus Garvey, and you think that Marcus Garvey is that dude I showed y'all the other day, right? The, the, the dude yeah. that was that, that was taught everybody how to drop it like it's hot or whatever, right? If that's what you think, D.O. James. Yeah, D.O. James. That's D.O. James. He's dropping it like it's hot. <laughs> My wife. But I am happy. Oh, Slavery by Another Name by Douglas Blackman, the dude, Jim Crow. Good book. Good book. I have that book. I think it's sitting over on my desk. The half has never been told. We have been distracted and disconnected. Yes. And it's growing. The disconnect is growing. Because now we're in the era of misinformation. Mm-hmm. Where anybody can just yes, draw ring the bell for notification so you don't miss free interacting. But you can also watch the recordings on YouTube and other social media. Yes, you can yes. always watch those. And comment, we will get right back to you. And if you have kids who are struggling with their history assignments, if you have kids who need a little bit of help for history, let us know. Let us know. Might be able to help you. Um, and we may be able to provide lessons or something that could help them. We know that kids have to write papers on history. And sometimes, you know, it's very confusing, especially as I just said a moment ago, when they think it's boring because it doesn't really affect them. So we're here for that uh, to definitely try to help that. We get questions. I get questions all the time all over, all over the world about history, and that's all good. Um, especially as we extend our, our influence on TikTok and things like that. But ladies and gentlemen, we went uh hour and over for, for the wrap up. We typically don't do that. I typically try to keep it an hour, but I wanted you all to have that opportunity to interact. This is definitely for the people who cannot get with us on Mondays, um, Wednesdays, or Thursdays. Feel free. Me, the boys, my wife, we'll be on here we'll, to talk about or go a little bit into what we talked about on those days and encourage you to go back and watch those episodes from this this past week. Watch the episodes from this past week so you can be informed, so you can be informed. Share them, share them and encourage others to interact. I'm going to try to get us to start pushing stuff out on an audio podcast. So you don't necessarily have to watch the video, but we can put it on things where you can pull it from Apple, uh, iPods and different things like, uh, you know, podcasts and things like that um, so that you can grow your, your understanding and grow your knowledge. And you can listen to things while you're in your car, while you're on the go, while you're sitting in your job and learn while you're on the go, on the go, not just watch this on the video. But Teddy, I'm, we're gonna get ready to get out of here. Do you have anything last last things to say as we get ready to close up this wrap up? Nothing else, but thank you for joining us for our wrap up. We will be back on Monday with Mom's show for Adroit Living. Please make sure to attend that, and we will all see you next week. Cool. Every show is moving to five, so to make it easier for everybody, I, I believe so. Oh, but yeah, being like savings time, everybody's moving to five. But I'm already at five because I do it late. Because you know, but all right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you, Pastor Sarden. Thank you, Tyson. Thank you, Tina. Uh, I saw Janarius in here. Thank you all for uh, joining us for this um, this wrap-up. is really appreciated. And I hope you all got something from some of the things that me and Teddy discussed that we covered over this past week. Um, until next week, uh, you all be blessed. Be blessed. And please feel free. Oh, man, it's always good to see you, my brother. Uh, please, please feel blessed. Uh, just for the rest of this, this, this going into Sunday, and we will see you as Teddy said on Monday. Teddy will be on her show on Monday, and she'll have something else, uh, hot and new for you. So, you, to, to further your understanding on how to live more jointly, all, right, all right. I've said enough, I'm going to get out of here so I can go eat. So, <laughs> see you all later. Peace. Peace.